Hello, dear Jews friends, this is Mateusz Kolosowski from Mind Sports Academy, and we are going to continue the topic of square rule as in the previous clip we've only done the introduction, so this is definitely not enough information that you need to be sure that you understand uh, this technique of evaluating the opponent games. Therefore, we are going to do more exercises, more positions, and also in the next exercises, the following exercises, I'm going to present you some um, exceptions from the rule of square, Situ situations when you cannot just blindly follow the, the rules I gave you, but um, if you are focused and if you are aware of what's going on on the position, I'm sure nothing wrong is going to happen to you. So first of all, let's uh, once again say what the rule of square is. So basically if the king is within the square that is created by connecting the edges of the square, if the king is in this area, then the position the situation the board is drawish. If the king is outside the square it's going to be winning for the player who has the pawn. Of course we need to know how to make a draw. Uh, we need to know how to draw the square. So this pawn b3 wants to go to b8. This is the first edge of our uh, of our square. The second edge is going to be uh, created by creating by drawing another line of the same same length comparing to the one uh, starting on b3 and ending on b8 so it's going it needs to be uh, six square longs as you can see on the board b3 b4 b5 b6 b7 b8 is six squares so b8 c8 d8 e8, f8, and g8. This gives us six, six squares, so the next corner of the board is going to be here. And the last corner is, once again, six squares. G, g8, g7, g6, g5, g4, and g3. Once again, six squares. And last time I told you that you can draw the square by just uh, counting the squares, drawing equally long lines long equally long edges of the square which is very logical but if you remember something from geometry classes you may also remember that the diagonals within the square are of the same length and this is what actually i prefer to do uh, but you may just pick the technique that is more appealing to you so basically what i do is draw a diagonal from the square when the, where the pawn is positioned to um, one of the squares on the, the last rank and then create a diagonal like this and then the next diagonal has to has to be equal so you you may already see that um, from g8 and b3 if you, if you would like to draw a line it needs to meet on g3 right so it will have to be a square when the next diagonal starts it's going to be finished on b8 and once again we have the square this is the square no matter how you do it, just make sure you know that this is a proper square with uh, equally long edges and that it's not a triangle circle or whatever, rectangle or square. Just make sure it's a proper square. And then once you are certain it's a square, then just check if the king is within the square or not. As you can see in this position, the king is outside of the square. So, uh, if it's blacks to move, then king g6, king g7, or king g5, those three moves uh, are going to be enough to make a draw. 
one of these three moves. But if it's White's turn, then I'm afraid nothing will sell, save White, save Black. Sorry, because then once again, let's draw a square. We need to take in, into account that White will is going to play uh, b4 in the first move, so he's going to play like this, and then we draw a square from b4, not from b3, because White is going to play b4. From b4 to b8, an equally long edge to f8. f4 and b4 this is the square so if it's white's turn in, the, in this position nothing is going to save black so it really matters whose turn it is okay let's go to another example this is a bit more tricky because even though i'm pretty sure you already know how to draw a square it may look once again it may look like the square should be drawn in this way. Looks very logical, right? From A2 to G8, then the same length of from A8 to G, uh, from A8 to A8, from A8 to G8, from G8 to G2, and from G8 G2 to A2. This looks like a proper square. It is a square, in fact, but not the square that you should draw. Why is that? What am I talking about? Well, if you remember the rules of chess properly, you should remember that the pawn can make a move for two squares in its initial move. So this will not apply here. If the pawn is on its initial position, the square is going to be way smaller because we need to imagine that it's already one square ahead so that it's more advanced in fact that it is on a3 because it can move to a4 in just one move so it's pointless to draw a square like this if after just one move it's going to be far smaller in just one move um, after king a3 white is going to play a4 and then you could be surprised. How is that possible? How is my king? Well, here it's still on time because you can go king e4 and it's once again within uh, within the square. But if it was further, that would be a really unpleasant surprise. So once again, if the pawn is on its initial position, you need to imagine it's actually one square further positioned that it's in this case on a3 and then the proper square uh, to be drawn should look let me perhaps use the diagonals this time should look like this from a3 this is the initial position of the pawn that you imagine from a3 to f8 then the next diagonal from um, f3 to a8 we can connect those if it's going to be more visible for you And this is actually what it should look like. What it should look like. So if if it if it was White's move, White would just play um, a4, and then you see that the king is just outside of the square. If it's Black's turn, Black can still make it into the square by playing either King f3. Let's put it in, in yellow. Either king f3 or king f4 and it's within the square. But if it's, once again, if it's white to move, white just plays, uh, white just plays a4, like this, king f4, a5, king e5, a6, king d6, a7, king c7, queen. Which is just a proof of the square rule. So once again, if the pawn is placed on its initial position, we draw a square, taking that in, into account that it can make a move for uh, two squares in its initial move. So from you draw a square from a3, 
because from a3 and a2 it can move to a4. You draw a square from a3, then first edge is to a8, second to f8, then to f3, and you have your proper square. Uh, I hope this was a transparent explanation. Uh, thank you for watching, and please stay tuned. There's going to be, to be part 3 of the square rule. Uh, if there is something still that needs to be explained, uh, it's going to be explained in the in this last part. Um, make sure that you you practice this on your own because I know this may look strange. Lots of uh, lines that I uh, I've been drawing all the time. Lots of um, changes being made. So make sure that you practice it. And thanks for watching. Please stay tuned. This has been Mateusz Kowalski for Mind Sports Academy.